What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Dana White walks out during interview. In what is sure to go down as one of the strangest podcast appearances of all time, UFC CEO left both hosts Howie Mandel and MMA fans confused when he quickly walked off set during an appearance of the comedian's Howie Mandel Does Stuff podcast. After a very positive intro from Mandel, White quickly indicated that he's sick and tired of being on podcasts and walked off set leaving fans to wonder whether the situation was scripted or whether White simply wasn't feeling the interview. Dana White, you are an amazing guy. You are, I can't thank you enough for being here. Uh, you and Ginger seem to be getting along. Um, you are not only an amazing businessman, you are an inspiration, you are a philosopher. The way you do business, the way you uh, conduct your business and your friendships, and media is, uh, I'm, I'm jealous. And, but Dana, I can't thank you enough for being here. Thank you for all the kind words. I appreciate it. I, I am so tired of doing podcasts. It's, I, I'm literally done with them. I'm not doing any more podcasts. In response, one fan joked, shortest interview ever. Another wrote, why the f did he even show up? Was this a bit? One member of the MMA community added, more like Dana, why? Why didn't you leave sooner? Another questioned whether the walk-off was scripted, writing, I hate that I can't tell if this is scripted or not. I love doing podcasts. I wish I was there. Another MMA community member added, You have the last podcast with Dana. That is something. So far, White has yet to discuss the appearance, leaving us with more questions than answers. Next up, let's take a look at Chael Sonnen goes off on John Jones for comments. After the pre-sale date for UFC 300 tickets was pushed back, it became clear to many fans that the UFC is struggling to find a headliner for the historic card. To add on to that, heavyweight champion John Jones also revealed that the UFC asked him if he would be interested in fighting Stipe Miocic on the card. This came as a surprise to the MMA community, given that Jones has been recovering from a torn pec. However, the way Chael Sonnen sees things, Jones's comments didn't do the UFC any favors, and only further highlighted that the promotion is scrambling to find a main event for UFC 300. He took aim at the champ in a video for his YouTube channel. John Jones comes out and he says, uh, yeah, the UFC, they, uh, they just offered me a main event for UFC 300. And I would just have absolutely no idea what goes through that guy's head. Like, like there's a level of stupid that's really hard to achieve. Right, I mean, it's hard. And in fairness, I wouldn't know. Like, when would it be okay for John to claim that he was offered a main event at UFC 300? When would that be okay to claim? So now he comes out and he outs the organization. He just outs the organization. Hey man, these guys don't have a main event. With the UFC 298 card rapidly approaching this weekend, it'll be interesting to see if the UFC announces the main event for the historic UFC 300 card. Next up, let's take a look at Alexander Volkanovsky goes off on Henry Cejudo. Triple C Henry Cejudo recently found himself on the crosshairs of members of the MMA community after appearing to fire his longtime coach Eric Albaracin on camera during the UFC 298 countdown show. Many were quick to question why the former champ chose to fire his coach on camera rather than having the conversation behind closed doors. Leading up to his UFC featherweight title fight with Ilya Topuria this weekend, Alexander Volkanovsky weighed in during an interview with the Mac Life, appearing to be in disbelief over the situation. Yeah, so, I mean, I thought it looked like, yeah, he was like taking it in. But I mean, I just don't get it. I mean, you are an absolute prick if you were doing that and just thought this would be good content. I'm going to make the most of this and go out and do that. Henry, if this is legit, you are a piece of shit. Let me tell you that right now. Like, I don't, that's, it's crazy to me. That's why I don't, I don't believe it. I mean, I don't think he's that much of a bag to do that. I don't think he is. As Volkanovski also indicated, he plans to confront Triple C about the video during the UFC 298 press conference on Thursday. Come on, guys. Come on, you guys, you guys. Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, Phil Jackson, Michael Jordan. Come on, you think that, that they, they would ever break? Break up? Come on, man. This is the against the just, for, just so you guys know, this is the greatest combat coach of all time. This is an unbreakable bomb. Let's go. UFC 298, we're taking over. I'm going to be sitting, drinking Team Seeker Juice front row watching Cejudo take out Marab Dubashvili and stamp another title shot become C4. There you go. Got him. Got him. 
Next, let's take a look at Nina Drama and Brandon Schaub go back and forth. Popular MMA influencer Nina Marie Danielle, also known as Nina Drama, recently got into a back and forth with outspoken former UFC heavyweight Brendan Schaub. During a recent video for his YouTube channel, Schaub weighed in on the footage of former middleweight champion Sean Strickland sparring with a content creator by the name of Sneeko. After indicating that the whole situation seems orchestrated to him, Schaub found himself in the crosshairs of Nina Drama, who took aim at him on social media, writing, Here's the thing about Brendan Schaub. I love the guy. But this take has to be more stupid than Sneeko agreeing to spar Sean Strickland, lol. Brendan Schaub, do you really think Dana White and the UFC would risk it all for Sneeko and Sean Strickland? I have the answer. It's a hell no, LMAO. Schaub then responded, writing, Listen, here's the thing about Nina Marie. Love the girl, but she's new. How long are we going to pretend the UFC has morals and this is such a reach? Maria, you attend every Power Slap event for starters, which was created by the ownership of the UFC. Legit MMA journalists are banned for not giving cupcake questions from UFC events. Don't even get me started on fighter pay. Assuming UFC is open to a YouTuber getting his ass whooped is far from a bad take. A lawsuit doesn't scare the UFC. Please look into current lawsuit from over 100 plus former fighters. I can go on how this is far from a reach. Still love you. Nina then responded again, posting a meme and quoting it, writing, I don't know, I just got here, Brendan Shop. I'm still new, lol. For his part, Sean Strickland indicated that the whole situation is being blown out of proportion, simply writing in part, LMAO, they act like I murdered a man, so a man wanted to fight and got beat up. So effing what? Now, let's shift gears and take a look at UFC Fight Updates. With Fight Week underway for UFC 298, let's take a look at some UFC Fight Updates. Starting with two additions to the UFC Fight Night card on April 27th. The card, which will take place at the Apex, will see Ultimate Fighter alumni Austin Hubbard face off with Mikhail Figlak in a lightweight bout where Hubbard will look to bounce back from her loss to Kurt Holleba, and Figlak will look to make a successful return to the Octagon after suffering the first loss of his career back in September of 2022. The card will also feature a scrap between Dante Mays and Kyle Machado which will see Mays look to bounce back from a loss to Rodrigo Nascimento back in November, and Machado look to bounce back from a November loss to Mick Parkin, which was the first loss of his professional career. Last but certainly not least, reports have indicated that Terence McKinney and Esteban Rebovic will throw down on May 11th in a lightweight bout that will see McKinney look to build on a two-fight win streak, while Rebovic looks to build momentum on a win over Camuela Kirk back in July. Next, let's take a look at Robert Whittaker reveals game plan for Paulo Costa fight. When Robert Whittaker and Paulo Costa step into the octagon at UFC 298, the bout will be a high stakes affair for both fighters. For Whittaker, the former champ will be looking to return to title contention after a loss to Drake's Duplessis last year, while Costa will be looking to make a triumphant return to action after being absent from the octagon since his UFC 278 victory over Luke Rockhold back in August of 2022. Ahead of the middleweight showdown, Whitaker spoke in an interview with MMA News to discuss the big difference between his last fight with Duplessis and his upcoming fight with Costa. But no, I, yeah, the idea was to, to fuel myself a little bit more. I think in, in especially last camp, I may have pulled the pulled the plug a little bit too early on, on the calories and, you know, it, it made me feel a little, little, little bit lethargic coming into fight week. So to have a little bit more calories, get some more sessions out, feel stronger, keep the muscle a little bit more on. Yeah, you know, I, I feel great. Whitaker currently sits as a pretty strong favorite heading into the bout with negative 250 odds. While on the flip side, Paulo Costa sits as a plus 205 underdog. With the chance to re-enter the 185 pound title picture, it'll be interesting to see whether or not the change makes a difference for the Reaper. Next, let's take a look at Conor McGregor leaked on UFC 300 poster? Although Dana White has yet to officially announce the UFC 300 main event, fans have continued to give their predictions for the historic headliner. While Conor McGregor has continued to indicate that he will be competing in June, despite what Dana White has claimed, many fans believe that he will ultimately be booked to headline the UFC 300 card. On Tuesday, the UFC shared a countdown image indicating that there's just two months to go until the massive card. Astute fans noticed that it appears as though Conor McGregor is featured on the poster. Others, however, speculated that it's Drake's Duplessis, and a bout between the middleweight champ and Israel Adesanya will be announced for the card. As one fan wrote, Dude, that is Conor? Another added, It's been confirmed, guys. McGregor vs. Chandler at UFC 300. One fan was left torn on whether the image featured McGregor or Duplessis, writing, 
The fact that McGregor and DDP have damn near identical head shapes, it's ficking with everyone. Another member of the MMA community weighed in, writing, that looks like the back of McGregor's head. The confusion was shared by another member of the community, who added, is McGregor the person in this image? From the sounds of things, the MMA community is largely divided on which fighter is featured on the card, with one fan simply writing, can't tell if that's Connor or DDP. With UFC 298 rapidly approaching, it sounds as though many are hopeful that the main event will be announced on or after the broadcast. Dana White reveals horrible news about Conor McGregor. In a recent interview with Dana White and Kevin Iola, Dana said that Conor isn't easy to get to fight and he needs to know Conor is in a training camp. There's a lot of confusion right now from fans because Conor is saying he's ready to go on social media, but Dana isn't buying it. Here's what Dana had to say. If Conor's not fighting now, is, is he healthy enough to fight if he chose to fight? Well, I don't know that. Only Connor knows that. Well, okay, that's what I'm asking. So do you Connor's know? the one. I mean, these are questions for Connor McGregor, not me. Connor, I, I, you know, I know he's training. I don't know what level of training he's doing. I don't know what level of kicking he's doing right now. I don't know yeah. any of that stuff. But you talked to him about fighting. I mean, I'm sure you talked to him about fighting on 300. So you would have to have some idea, wouldn't you, Dana? Yeah, but but I need to, I need to know the guy's in a full camp and he's he's ready to go and you know Conor McGregor has a movie coming out he's got businesses that he's built it's just it's a it's a completely different dynamic got when it. you're dealing with a guy that has this kind of money Nate Diaz and Sneeko had a wrestling match just days after Sean Strickland sparred Sneeko which received a lot of backlash in the video you can see Nate manhandling Sneeko and makes him tap after he pins his wrist backwards top comments Ian Gary calling in for a co-main event is hilarious. He isn't anything but a preliminary bout, sick of his fake conjured up drama. Sean Strickland vs. Sneeko 2 at UFC 300 makes the most sense as of now. Hamzat fought four cans a year, now he fights barely once a year. DDP doesn't look ready for UFC 300 with a face like that. Hamza needs to fight soon or he's gonna lose even the most dedicated Hamzat fans attention. To the average MMA viewer, he's already falling off the hype train head first. Make sure to leave a comment and you might get featured in our next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss any MMA news. Check out our video from yesterday if you missed it. See you tomorrow.